from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Cambridge, Ontario. This Mass is offered for the souls in purgatory, for soldiers overseas, for more religious vocations, for peace in the world and within our families, for our government leaders, and for all people who are in need of prayers. Thank you for the gift of this math, Mass to the faithful in Canada. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. To celebrate worldly the mystery of our faith, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. <coughs> You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. You came to call sinners Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. My brothers and sisters, we do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I be of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I 
believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I believe that I shall see The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. All the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having lost ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel, once again, we find our Lord teaching in parables. Now, the parables are, what can we call them? Word pictures, illustrations. They're images drawn from everyday experience of his audience. These parables essentially are teaching stories that bring to life and bring to life in dramatic fashion some moral truth or timeless reality concerning God and the life of faith. In a postmodern era, I think in some ways it's really the simplicity, you may I call it the quaintness, of the language of the parables, drawn as they are from the everyday life of the audience of Jesus' time, that really poses no small challenge for us today in this high-tech world. I wonder how many of us even know someone who owns a sheep, let alone a hundred sheep, in our increasingly paperless digital world. There are certainly fewer coins to lose especially those made of real gold, silver, or copper. In any case, the parables related in today's gospel speak to us of those who have lost something. Here, the shepherd who goes out in search of the lost sheep, the woman who loses a coin. Elsewhere, Jesus will go on to speak of the father whose prodigal son was lost morally and spiritually to a life of excess. In each case, we should see how the loss is accompanied accompanied by the experience of real crisis. We see the great efforts made by the various protagonists described to recover what they've lost. And in each case, our Lord describes the joy of finding what was lost and of the great rejoicing of those who share in the discovery. 
In each case, we find Jesus speaking both to his followers and to his opponents about the joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. In the words of one commentator, Jesus' words speak to us of how heaven seeks after the lost of the earth and how heaven rejoices when the lost is found. In fact, these parables about God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, and the joy over one repentant sinner have a great deal, I think, to say to us today in the era of the new evangelization. In the first instance, the parables serve to remind us in a powerful way about what uh, St. John Paul II calls the church's ministry of mercy. So too, Pope Francis invites the universal church to prepare now to celebrate an extraordinary jubilee year of mercy beginning on December 8th. It will be a time when the church contemplates the mystery of God's mercy, which in the words of uh, Pope Francis, constitute a wellspring of joy, of serenity, and of peace. The Holy Father reminds us that it is in the parables that we heard in today's gospel that we see the mystery expressed of a God who is always presented as full of joy, especially when he pardons. In these parables, we find the core of the gospel and of our faith because mercy is presented as a force that overcomes everything, filling the heart with love and bringing consolation through pardon. And at the same time, I think we do well to recognize that we live in an era that has witnessed in many ways the loss of the sense of the existence of God, of the presence of God's grace at work in the midst of everyday life. And along with this, what can we call it? The eclipse of the sense of the greatness of the human person created in God's image and likeness. For in the words of one philosopher, where there is no God, there's no humanity either. When one looks, for instance, at the very lofty images of the human person created in God's image and likeness, certainly as reflected in Renaissance art, architecture and literature, it's difficult not to ask how it is we went from Dante to Derrida in the first place. In our era that speaks more and more of the post-human, of the transhuman, with images of the human person as cyborg, also when we consider uh, images in popular culture of the walking dead and the zombie, uh, they seem to be so prevalent, we're led to reflect on what happens when people lose all sense of their having been created in God's image and likeness in the first place. So it is, as we consider God's mercy, the church documents have spoken now for some, uh, for, in fact, for some decades about the crisis of the sense of sin in our time. St. John Paul, already in the 1980s, spoke of the obscuring of the moral and religious conscience, the lessening of the sense of sin, the distortion of the concept of repentance, the lack of effort to live an authentically Christian life. Some decades earlier, it was Pope Pius XII who observed that the sin of the century is the loss of the sense of sin. Catholic philosopher Etienne Gilson once said that the real trouble in our time is not the multiplication of sinners, but the disappearance of sin. Here we see as the voice of God seems, can we ask, to no longer echo within the depths of the conscience of the human person. At the same time to show in some ways that there's really nothing new under the sun, it was St. Gregory of Nyssa, who speaking in the fourth century, uh, said that the, spoke of the darkening, the obscuring of the divine image in the heart of a humanity that has exchanged the image of God for a mask. So here it is that we find ourselves in a, can we call a postmodern, a post-human era with regard to the lost spirit of repentance. No God, humanity that no longer strives to live in accord with the God image within, no sense of sin, a distorted understanding of human freedom, a deformed conscience that does not even desire any more repentance, leaving people in the kind of, can we call a spiritual paralysis with regard to their inner life. Certainly as Advent now fast approaches, we're called once more to live our faith authentically, deeply, fully in all of its dimensions, drawing closer to the God of love, the God of mercy. And not only to draw close to the wellsprings of God's mercy in the Eucharist, in the sacrament of reconciliation, but ourselves to be instruments of God's mercy to other people, to the lost, the lonely, to the abandoned of our society, to the poor, for all who live in the margins, in the periphery of, the society, of our society, of which Pope, Pope Francis speaks. 
And so for all those, again, these for whom Christ himself demonstrated in the Gospels a very special love and concern. Again, when we look at the image of a postmodern humanity, what can we say? Through the glass darkly of the mass media, of the modern arts, but also through contemporary lines of philosophical reflection, at the very least, something seems to have been lost. How people would go about looking for something that they don't even know they've lost is another question. I think it is a relevant one for our time. Of course, today's parables have a happy ending. While the parables describe the dynamic process at work in the arc, what we call the upward spiral of growth in the spiritual life, we should always remember that these parables speak to us very powerfully of the newness of life that is ours with God, the newness of life that God wants to give us through his love and through his mercy. So as we continue to celebrate this Mass, let us remember the good news that God is always searching for us first. Let us pray that having experienced God's mercy in our own life and own lives through the Eucharist, through the Word of God, through the Sacrament of Reconciliation, that we too may bring others to the fonts of God's mercy and of God's love. Let us present now our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, asking him to hear and to answer our prayers, confident that God hears the voices of all who trust in him. We now present these prayers to him, asking him to hear and to answer our prayers. For Pope Francis, for the bishops, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For political leaders in our society and throughout the world, that they may be always concerned for the good of all, and especially for the good of those who live and struggle within the margins of our society. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intentions of today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Let's pray also for the sick and for all who care for them. We pray to the Lord. Amen. And for all of those intentions now that we remember within the silence of our own hearts. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear us. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Yes. Be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. So in the company with the choirs of the angels and the archangels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas. Grant me, O Lord my God, a mind to know you, a heart to seek you, wisdom to find you, conduct pleasing to you, faithful perseverance in waiting for you, and a hope of finally embracing you. Amen. Let's pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as is ended, let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. for an ideal gift for Christmas? May I suggest Music from the Missions, Part 3. 25 of your favorite hymns that will take you to a different place where you'll always long to return. Music from the Missions. Call us at 1-888-383-6277 for the perfect Christmas gift.